all right traders I am back again with another video and it's been quite a while since I posted a video on YouTube so I'm gonna go ahead and talk today about the pound pairs there's a couple opportunities with the pound so I want to go over those um, one thing that we do um, in my members group is that we have a session you know at five o'clock usually five we call it the live at five so we'll have a five o'clock session because we want to catch when the market closes see what the market is doing what the opportunities are because it's a 24-hour market and you base it off of the daily time frame we look at that market close what the opportunities are then so one thing that we always look at is news so we want to make sure that if we're going to get into a trade or if there's a trading opportunity if it's not that it's not going to be affected by news because news could affect everything that I talk about today so I may tell you something good and then next thing you know it's bad because maybe the news affected it or or blew the pair out the water or whatever alright so you gotta be careful of that that's one thing you always want to be aware of so I'm gonna look at these pound pairs um, the first one I'm looking at is the pound Aussie and with this pound Aussie you could see the market moving in a nice uptrend so everything with Ichimoku is bullish okay because we got a bullish future right here so my future is going to be green if it's bullish red if it's um, bearish and that holds weight because I don't have to look at the crossover and I could tell just by looking at the color and the future cloud is showing where the support and resistance levels are pretty much it doesn't show you or tell you what's what the what the trade or anything and it really doesn't even tell you long term it may tell you to stay long are short but if you're not a long-term trader such as weeks and months then it may not help you as much but it may help you for support and resistance the more immediate things that are going to help you are going to be your Tinkinson here and your Kijinson so basically we see the market moving with the Kijinson a lot of times I'm um, sorry we see the market moving with the Tinkinson a lot of times you follow the trade direction of the TK crossover which is this crossover that's happened here so the markets bullish we got a green future which means that it's a bullish future and you could see the market bouncing off of Tinkinson so on a strong trend this market is not gonna really close below um, Tinkinson and definitely not below Kijinson if it's a strong market so it'll stay within this area and usually a lot of times it'll just bounce off of Tinkinson and continue until it gets weak and then start to break down then you may catch a couple bounces off of Kijinson before it breaks to the downside now what I'm looking at here is it's bouncing off of Tinkinson pretty much because the market was in an uptrend alright then it pulled back and pulled back right to this Tinkinson level and then it showed a rejection candle big rejection candle here first there was a little indecision and a big rejection candle it looks like there was some buying pressure in this area and now a little bit more um, bulls are coming into the market but now it's starting to look like indecision again at this point but you know you can't judge it now because this candle still has a long way to go before it closes tomorrow because this is the daily time frame but also this level that I'm looking at it's super important because it's not just any old level it's a support and resistance level so currently it's a support level but you could see back here it was resistance so your best support and resistance levels are going to be levels that were once support uh, resistance and then became support or were support and became resistance and you can see not only here so this level was back in May back in May of this year we had this level as resistance then we currently broke through it and now it's looking it's like it's holding as support but if I go farther back you could see where it was even more so resistance back here all right back in um, 2016 it was resistance two times back here all right so you could see how strong this level is let's go a little farther see what we got so it's a very strong level very good level so we could have that as part of um, something to give us even a more higher probability trade opportunity but what I'm looking at now is that this rejection that's the big thing I'm looking at that rejection and if the market could close above that rejection that's where I would look to enter the market now I, I don't like to I like to do my analysis on the daily time frame alright so basically if I decide what I'm gonna do on the daily I'll go to the four hour just to find the entry point now I have a lot of different ways to enter the market so let's go to the four hour time frame see what that is telling us so currently four hour looks a little sloppy here alright and it's hard to really get a good feel for what what you got going on with the four hour you see this level here um, 
nothing that I'm going to really look at doing on the four hour. Now, we do trade fractals and there would be a fractal entry here, but I'm not going to discuss that at this point because it's not valid yet. So we'll go back to the daily time frame and we'll just look at the current market on the daily time frame. So currently you see this high here and this low here of the of the rejection candle. The market has been trading inside of that level for the past day and a half. So if the market continues to trade inside of that level, eventually it's going to break out. It's going to break out one way or the other. And if it breaks out to the upper side, we're going to look to trade to the upper side. All right, we're going to look for a long trade. Now we're going to have our first level is going to be our first target is going to be this point right here. All right. And then from there, you basically could just find your target if, if you look to your left to find support and resistance levels that you want to move to. And that's basically what I would tell you to do. Um, and this may be a, a big stop loss for some people, but on the daily time frame, my stop loss is going to be at this point. Now, just because we have a rejection here and we're still outside of the, TK, of the um, TK zone, the market still could drop inside of this zone and still hold support at um, Kijinsen. All right. So still be careful of that. All right. Because we want to see the market close higher than this rejection candle. But a lot of times I find that on the daily time frame, when you have a nice rejection like this, um, that a lot of times those trades, those candles hold true. So don't just even though it may stay in this range here in this consolidated state for a day or two or three, even four until it breaks or break the high or low this is still pretty valid so if it doesn't break lower it's still valid that it's rejecting this level and then once it closes above it still is valid all right so that's looking at the pound Aussie don't love anything on the four hour to enter the trade I usually like to as I said look at the bias of the daily figure out what the market is doing on the daily and then go to the four hour to make my trading opportunities now I'm gonna go to the pound CAD we'll look at all these pound pairs and discuss but the pound looks like it's having some opportunities here so again looks pretty much like the pound Aussie so let me go back here a little bit nice trend to the downside right and you see what happened here we broke had that TK crossover the market pulled back it honored the first time it pulled deep enough back to honor that Kijinsen level and then it dropped to the downside but ever since then it pretty much was bouncing on Tinkinson and you can see it doesn't really close inside the zone the TK zone that much and it bounced on Tinkinson a lot here and then finally pulled within the zone inside the zone and then showed us a rejection at Kijinsen and then fell again had another TK crossover and then came back in the zone and dropped out again all right and then finally we we, we broke to the upside now it's not showing a real strong trend to the upside as we did show back here because the trend is stronger back here you could tell because it stayed outside the TK zone and, and it hit it only hit Tink, uh, Kijinsen two times and really three times within that nice long trend now here we've already hit Kijinsen a bunch of times so and we're not really we don't really have a good angulation on Tinkinson or Kijinsen you want to see that nice angulation to the downside as you did here or you want to see it to the upside as you did here you don't want to see a flat Kijinsen all right you saw a flat Kijinsen here and you saw the market pull back and then the Kijinsen angled back to the downside everything angled to the downside now looking at Ichimoku all signals are bullish here on the daily time frame um, again you have looking where we're trading so I like to trade levels signals and triggers so what we do we call this the LST what we look for is our level to trade our signal to trade and then the trigger to trade if we don't have all three things we usually don't get into the trade because you're gonna have a higher probability trade and a better pop, um, trade if you have all those things you need to know where you're trading um, where you're trading levels are where you want to get into a trade you don't just automatically say okay I'm gonna get into a trade now you have to have levels where you think about getting into a trade where the market may give it give you an opportunity so what I like to say is those levels are the train station and if the market is at a train station or the train is at the station that's where you could get on but if the market's in between train stations you really don't want to be jumping into it all right you don't want to try to jump on that train all right because you'll fall off and the same thing with the market you don't want to jump in the market between levels so we have levels where we look to trade the market one of those levels is your Kijinsen here Another level is your Tinkinson when the market's trending to the upside really nice or to the downside. 
our angulation is not really strong here for Kijinsen, but we did pull back and we look like we're bouncing on that level. So the past three days, if you look, we had indecision. Then we had a little rejection and another rejection. So it looks like there's some buying pressure here. And again, until the market closes below or above, we don't have much going on yet. So I'm looking to see if the market will close above this level and then look for my entry. Now, I like to get in again, as I said, on the four hour time frame. So we're still looking for this to move to the upside. But I mean, it's not a super strong trend. All right, but if it once it starts going, we need to get some momentum built up here. So let's go to the four hour time frame, see if it looks a little bit better for us. Now, what confuses people on Ichimoku is when I go from the daily time frame to the four hour time frame and you don't have the same thing. So on the daily time frame, this is all bullish. You got a bullish future, bullish TK crossover, prices above the cloud, sequel span, pretty much above um, price. So you got all bullish signals, right? When I go to the four hour time frame, and they're different then people start to get confused um, it's hard for me to explain it right now at this point but I like to use the fractals to help me when it gets to that point and when I see the fractals and and know which way our fractals are then I'm gonna start looking and understanding and knowing where I should be trading I'm still gonna keep my bias off of the daily alright and until the daily tells me more I'm going to keep my bias to trade to the upside. So a lot of times I'll tell traders, once you decide where you want to trade or what you're going to do on the daily, don't get confused with the four hour. Just take Ichimoku off and look at the four hour and look how to enter. Now that's if you're trading just price action and levels. Now if you want to keep Ichimoku on there, then you're going to have to wait for the Ichimoku signals to develop. And in this case, you probably won't get a signal for quite a while. All right. Because you got Chiku Span is well below price. You got a bearish TK crossover. Your future is bearish. So you'd have to wait wait on this. And the next thing you'd be looking at is trading to the downside. All right. There's a lot more that I look at on the chart. And especially the fractals. The fractals will help you even more. Even if you go from the daily time frame to the four hour time frame. And if you understand the fractal structure, then you will be able to understand the market and which way you may think that it's going to go or be able to analyze that it's going to go because of the fractal structure all right down here I'm not going to explain much about that fractal structure because I'm just looking at these opportunities I'm not trying to get in deeper to more of the trading concept I'm trying to help you to understand the Ichimoku trading concept but once you break outside of the Ichimoku trading concept you have to have other things that you rely on all right because you do need to rely on price action. Ichimoku doesn't really tell you how to enter the market, okay? It, a lot of times it just ba basically tells you the bias. Now there are entry signals and things to that effect, but that's gonna, they're a little slower and longer and takes a while for those to happen and sometime you get in way later than you could have gotten in on a price um, level that if you understood the market and look at what's happening with the market as far as support and resistance the structure of the market then you may be able to get into a trade earlier price action and so forth so we're gonna just look at basic Ichimoku right now alright so on this on the four hour time frame not much that I I really would pay much attention to I'd like to see what the daily is gonna do if the daily breaks down and it violates these rejections well then we probably which we definitely would change our bias, even though we're above the cloud, all right? But there would be some things that I still would look at. So I want to see the breaks of um, certain levels to understand which way the market is going. All right, so it's kind of, it's getting a little flat here. We want to see that bounce. We want to get that momentum going. So we want to see a, a probably a good close above this level here. All right. And a lot of times trading the daily time frame, you're going to have a bigger stop loss. That's why we go to the four hour. Also, you could get a better entry, a, a quicker entry and a less, uh, a smaller stop loss for less risk. All right. But on the daily, you're going to risk a lot because you pretty much want to have your stop loss below that level. And if you can't afford that level based off of your um, risk management, your money management, don't trade, don't take that trade. So I always tell people. All good trades are not good trades. You may have a perfect, great setup and everything. And it may, may be a good trade for me or it may be a good trade for someone else. But it might not be a good trade for you because, yeah, even though you have all the trade setups and everything you want, the um, stop loss is too big for you. So it bites into your capital more than you want it to. 
so you can try to reduce your your um lots but depending if you can reduce that much and is it even worth taking the trade all right so that's what we're looking at on the pound cad let's go to um whoops let's go to the pound swiss franc So the pound Swiss franc is one that's not giving us a real good opportunity. It pretty much looks like the pound cat a little bit, okay? Because it's bouncing off of Kijinsen about a couple of times. Again, in a strong trend, we want to stay below this green line, Tinkinson. You could see this was a strong trend to the downside, and it stayed below Tinkinson. Now, a strong trend to the upside, you had a pretty strong trend to the upside here, and you stay above Tinkinson. Then it pulls back to Tinkinson, but then it came all the way inside your zone. And you could see we talk about bounces now. The bounce was on the Kijinsen here, but in a nice strong trend, it's going to bounce on Tinkinson. So that's what you're going to look for when you're looking for it while the market's trending. You want to look for a bounce on Tinkinson, the green line, or Kijinsen. Now, in this case, the market is flat. Ichimoku doesn't do you much justice when the market is flat. And then we're looking at here, it's your Kijinsen is flat. The good thing is our top cloud isn't super flat. We got a flat bottom here, but yeah this is a flat market Ichimoku doesn't do you a lot of justice in this kind of a market I like to put support and resistance levels on this and trade it as as a range pretty much so I would I like to just do this but I'm gonna break it down a little bit deeper I like to just look at it as a range All right. and depending how you mark your ranges you can mark your range at the very bottom here you can mark your range at the bodies you can mark all the bodies but then when you go to the lower time frame to try to trade it it looks like it like the market went outside of those levels so there's a couple different ways to mark your ranges and I would just look at this as a range and try to trade it now looking at it here we were looking for the market to continue higher because we look like, like a like a possible bounce off of Kijinsen right so if you weren't looking at it as a range and you just followed Ichimoku blindly you would then look at this and say oh the market's going to move higher but currently the market is trading inside one candle for the past one two three four days looks like it's trying to make a little flag development here flag pattern but trading inside that one candle for four days it's not really doing anything so we want to see the market get outside of that level and then look what it really did back here it never really closed too much outside of this candle all the way back here now you had a little close out here and then the market came back and stayed inside that level but this is a pretty big candle here but you could see we stayed inside this level pretty much we haven't broken above that level so I want to go when I, when I see that kind of a thing I want to add um, something to help me with divergence here so I look at the ultimate oscillator and you could see this is a little bit of bearish divergence because this high here is going to be represented right here this is the high and this is the high that we're looking at and they were pretty much together let's see let's see let me erase those real quick let me erase those real quick oh sorry getting confused here <laughs> just want to put this on here A horizontal line so we could see just how level the how even those um, levels are they're even right we just want to make sure they're even so being that they're even that's that level and this level here would be this and then pretty much this area that's going to the downside that's a little bit bearish and this is going to the upside so this market's not going anywhere unless it can close above this level here pretty much because you got bearish divergence work starting to work against you all right now divergence I always tell people divergence can last for a long time but a lot of times what you see is divergence work at a um, at a strong support and resistance level so the divergence could kick in but it could be you can have divergence let me see if I have an example here where the market was you have divergence here pretty much you see it moving to the upside and this is just a quick example but I could show you basically a lot of times this is starting to trend to the upside all the lows here now it broke lower here 
but it was trending to the upside but this market was pretty even right there so see how long that divergence lasts but then finally it kicked in a little bit all right but then another thing that you're going to notice is look at this level and then look at this level don't look at the low here look at the low here I'm sorry look at the low here and look at the low here that's gonna be this low and pretty much somewhere in this area can't really tell real well so that looked a little higher and then the market went to the upside a little bit of bearish diver I'm um, bullish divergence sorry so let me move off of that and again looking at this chart um, if I was looking to get into a trade I already had my um, analysis and bias from the daily and with this pair I'm not really looking to trade because I don't see an opportunity yet so I go to the four hour time frame and see if it's showing me anything better and it looks kind of sloppy to me same kind of um, flag pattern developed but it looks really sloppy to me so until it starts breaking levels it's not doing anything or going anywhere I mean you see a red candle three reds four reds then three greens then a red green red green red you don't want to trade that kind of junk all right so let's go to the next pair all right so that's pound um, Swiss franc go pound yen then we'll look pound New Zealand and pound US dollar and then I'll get out of your way again another one that looks pretty much like it's in a range this is the pound yen looks like it's in a range on this daily time frame so no true opportunity because I like to trade if I'm gonna trade a range I want to trade these upper and lower levels alright now with Ichimoku when you learn the more advanced Ichimoku trading you could trade a range with these three levels like this alright so this would be fluctuation the middle level and then at this point you would start to use your you would go from your point high low your low then your high your low and your high and you would start to use your time analysis so Ichimoku has your time theory would you would start to use that and that would help you to trade your range a little bit better because based off your Ichimoku numbers when you hit a level that's when we expect a change in the market alright so we'll look for a change in the market and if you're at that level suppose the market moves down as it did here and then it's at one of our Ichimoku numbers then we expect a change in the market so that would almost give us a um, little bit more probability that the market may go to the upside because we're at support we hit one of our Ichimoku numbers okay and then um, your price action all right and with Ichimoku I really in a range I wouldn't have Ichimoku on my chart okay I would take it off but I can still use my time theory as far as my Ichimoku numbers and still be able to trade the range now that's a little bit more advanced you could just train trade the regular range with support and resistance but you have more opportunities to come into the market because with Ichimoku we would number this this would be one two three three is flux um, two is fluctuation sorry then these would be your upper support lower su support and resistance this would be your resistance your support and then you would have your fluctuation then you're trading your Ichimoku time theory you would start looking at your time value and then when you hit a level when you're at a level so if the market moved from there to here and then I keep counting my numbers when I get to this point at 2 then I can expect to, the market to change direction or, or continue based off of the time value alright and it's almost like GAN looking at GAN but a little bit more in-depth stuff here GAN is pretty in-depth also I don't know a lot about GAN, but Ichimoku uses numbers also. All right, so I know that's probably not helping you because I haven't gotten into detail with it. If you want more detail and you want to get super detailed about all these trading techniques, I suggest that you try to become a member of my site, FX at One Glance. Um, currently, I'm offering a lifetime membership. What I'm doing is offering that lifetime membership for... Um, till the end of the year once the year is up I'm never gonna offer another lifetime membership again so I'm gonna offer that lifetime membership until the end of the year and that membership is um, 
$250 membership. So let me go to the four hour time frame. But when we look at this regular, so let me take this off. So if you didn't look at the market real well and you couldn't tell it was in a range, then you would start to think that we're getting into a move to the upside. So you would be thinking that we're bouncing off of this Kijinsen here. All right. But to look at the cloud and everything, really sloppy. Chico spans inside of the price and the market's a little sloppy. Everything's flat. But if you're looking for that bounce, you would start to think you're going to get a bounce on, on this level. And then you would look to trade to the upside. But with all these signals that are are showing you that the market's not doing anything and you have no momentum, you wouldn't look for that trade. Now on the four hour time frame, the market looks a little cleaner and it looks more like it's a bearish market to the downside. All right, you're starting to break below the cloud. Now the cloud may hold that support here. Need to see what happens here, but we got a bearish TK crossover. So on the four hour time frame when the market I want to see if that market's gonna honor this crossover. Is it going to stay with Tinkinson and follow it to the downside? Or is it going to violate Tinkinson and then violate Kijinson? Once you violate your trend line, you know your market's pretty much going to the upside or downside. Your Kijinson plays as your trend line. All right. And then your Tinkinson is levels that you can bounce off of pretty much. But once you violate the Kijinson, then you start thinking maybe a change in bias, change in direction. All right, that's what you start to look at and think. Now, this cloud is super flat on the bottom. You can see how it is. No momentum in this market whatsoever. All right, so here was the only momentum we had. Then we flattened out. Now, it's a little bit of volatility, but it's just not a strong market to trade. And you may see the markets like this for quite a while um, until the holidays are over because you got a lot of people out going on vacation, kids getting out of school, and parents taking the kids on vacation, which means... A lot of the bankers and a lot of the big traders are getting out of the market and won't be back till after the new year. That's when you probably see the market start to pick up. But until then, you'll probably see a lot of um, false entries, false trades, because you just won't have the volume and the momentum to, to get the trade off. All right. But nothing I love on the pound yen as far as um, a trade opportunity there. So let's go to the pound New Zealand and then we'll go to the pound US dollar all right I'm gonna go to the daily time frame now this pound New Zealand dollar looks like it's in a decent trend you could see we came back in a nice strong trend you bounced off of Tinkinson every time here you see then it got flat right here, came back to tank to Kijinsen, got back inside your TK zone, and then it took off, it bounced off of Kijinsen, and then the market took off. Look at how tight everything was. Look at how your angulation was on your Tinkinson Kijinsen. They were tight together. When they're like that, you know you're in a strong trend. But then the market slowed down again. Kijinsen flattened out. That's a big sign. And the market bounced on Kijinsen a few times and took off a little bit more. All right. Then you had a rejection here at Kijinsen. Another opportunity to get into the market off of the rejection level and then the market pulled back and currently looks like it's pulled back to Tinkinson here but it may drop down to Kijinsen again but it's looking like it's on Tinkinson at this point. So I like to look for trades off of Tinkinson. If the trade doesn't develop then I'll look for my next level which will be Kijinsen. So at this level you do have some rejection here we want to see what this next candle is going to do. We're going to go down to the four hour time frame to see if we could get in. But we may be a little early because the market still may not be in turnaround mode yet. All right. Now, is there any divergence here? There's a little bit of divergence and you can see. So that may break break down and then you'll see the market move to the downside. But there's a little bit of divergence here because you could see this is your level. This level right here is this level this level right here is this level this level is going to the downside that's bearish while this is going to the upside they should be doing the exact same thing other than that that's bearish eventually it'll kick into the downside now let's go see if we have um, a strong support and resistance level some strong resistance anywhere because then that's probably where you're going to see the real divergence kick in and drop the market so let's see if we got anything strong we're past that level 
this could probably be your next level. This was a strong level right here, it looks like. Maybe. So somewhere in here, you could find some support and resistance. Not super clean, but there's some resistance here. Then you were all over the place here. Then the market violated here. The best levels are the levels where you have it. Again, as I said, one level of support and then it changes into resistance. And you can see a support and a resistance level a couple of times. So I would make this into a zone. I'm not going to draw the zone right now because there's no clear cut um, support and resistance level. And support and resistance isn't just a level. It's usually a zone. It's It's bigger than you know a couple pips here and there usually it's bigger than that so it's usually a zone that's why you have long wick candles sometime but I'm looking at the market pulling back to this level here now currently it looks like we're sitting at Tinkinson so let's see where we look like on the four hour again like I told you four hours it looks totally different see because this is the pullback mode then the market moves higher now everything's flat here very ugly to trade with Ichimoku at this point. We need the market to break below the cloud here to tell you more with Ichimoku. You're going to f find trouble with Chiku Span. Once Chiku Span is in the clear and the open, that's when your trades are strong to the downside or upside. All right, because then that also means that the market for the past 26 periods has violated or gotten through all the highs and lows, the immediate highs and lows. All right, so at this point, we're still looking like we can be in a range or sideways for a little bit go back to the daily and you could see here it still doesn't look clear for us to get a turnaround yet because you still have bearish candles and then this candle is not telling us anything yet and this is the daily time frame all right so we need to see probably more than a day or two before you see this thing try to turn to the upper side because I guess maybe when this candle closes we'll see where we are but probably the next candle after that which would give us two days and today is Wednesday then that will get us on Friday probably won't have a good opportunity on Friday because the weekend comes so it'd be hard to look at this and then you have to come back on Monday see if you can catch it all right so still I don't see the opportunity yet it's trying to develop but don't rush the market I always tell um, my traders um, trees that are slow to grow bear the best fruit okay so we want to be trees that are slow to grow and we will bear good fruit because we'll be patient on our trades a lot of people think that the the um, best trades our best traders are the ones with the si a good system yeah a good system makes you but it's not always the system because sometimes it's, it's a lot of time it's your mentality all right so if you have a bad mentality where you're breaking rules where you're impatient where you you in and out of the market you don't have the discipline you're not going to be a good trader anyway rules are not okay the system or not doesn't matter you have to follow some kind of rules and you have to not break them and you have to be patient to wait for the setups okay so you have to have that discipline that's what the best traders have those qualities so it's not the system so you need to be slow wait to see when you get the full setup don't try to beat the market and jump in front of the market let the market lead you and tell you and guide you all right so that's pound New Zealand dollar and I'm gonna stop rambling on after I go through this last one pound US dollar all right so pound US dollar we were talking about this a couple times um, in our sessions and we did look at this level here because this was a strong level so almost pretty much like a double top I'm gonna remove this Then we're going to go back. Let's see if what this level looks like. So based on that level, or too far back, doesn't really matter that much back there. Just looking at that level, we just looked at the double top level. Pretty much in a little zone area here, but that would be a pretty good size zone. You can make that into a zone to know where the support and resistance levels lie. Um, and that would be this zone here the upper and lower parts of this point would make that into a zone now you could see the market I guess this was um, September 
and now we are here in December we came back to this level and it looks like the market rejected that level a little bit I think you're gonna still see it come up to this point now we want to see what it looks like if we get back to that point but currently and it's sideways okay so the sideways market again Ichimoku doesn't help you a lot with a, with your trading alright now if we stick to the Ichimoku rules and it looks like it's trying to break to the upper side the problem is Kijinsen is super flat alright and you can see where it was flat back here then the market didn't do much and it never really did much alright so it's flat here and the market may not do much and again it's a lot of these this holiday season and at this time of the year where the market's not going to do a lot for you you have to catch some good trades if you can but after the holidays it'll probably get a little better currently I would if I was trading Ichimoku here I would be looking to see if we're going to bounce on this level so the thing that you want to do is you want to have your levels where you're looking to trade so Tenkinson, Kijinsen alright so these two levels I want to see what's going to happen at these levels am I going to get a price action rejection or, or signal to show me um, that there's a possible reversal which would be a small reversal of this move back to the upside alright and then back to this level so if I can catch a trade in this area I'm gonna trade it back to this level for sure because that's the resistance level alright but are we gonna bounce on Tinkinson here price again not giving us a clear-cut sign that it's gonna bounce there now you did have some rejections here but then it got weaker on this second candle and then now it's looked like it's a little bit of indecision and nothing happening so the market could fall through there and break, bounce off of the flat cloud the flat uh Kijinsen here and at that point we'd have to discuss it further but currently I would just be waiting to see if we stay outside of the TK zone and get a bounce will we build some momentum it doesn't look like the long-term momentum even short-term momentum because we're almost flat with Tinkinson you don't see that a lot when you, you see that when the market's very flat and you can see that here so it's a flat market but maybe we'll get back to this point maybe we'll be able to get a bounce off of that level and get back to the upper point here I, I like to trade this upper level without Ichimoku and just trade basic support and resistance um, if it gets to this point can even still look at that as a, as a double top because we didn't clear cut hit now double top double bottom you don't really have to exactly hit that level if you're close to that level it still could be considered a double top and when you're looking at double tops you want to see this pattern all right so I'm going to show you real quick you're looking for this all right pretty much be like an M pattern the market come back down go back up and then you get that good drop all right and you don't want anything on this side of you all right you want everything below you as it is here all right now if we had price action up here I wouldn't call this a double top all right you don't want that price action up there you want that price action all below you and then now uh, this is your top then you come back to your top and then you drop at that point you have your M and uh, most people probably already know this and then the bo double bottom would be your W you just look for the market to go then all right but that's it I think um pretty much finished up here don't have much more just want to let you guys know that um, I am offering my lifetime membership currently until the end of this year and then after this year is over there will never be another lifetime membership I'll just have yearly memberships and at this point the lifetime membership offers you a chance to get any of my courses which would be my advanced Ichimoku course my regular Ichimoku which is very very um, good teaches you a lot about basic concepts of Ichimoku and then price action um, have a price action course inside the Ichimoku course you also learn some price action and then also have a Forex for beginners course coming out just to teach people teach beginners about Forex the concepts of Forex and a little bit about trading it and I'm offering that right now my lifetime membership going to continue to offer that until the end of this year once this year is over you'll never see it again so if you do want to become a member let me show you my website real quick and my where you can go to become a member okay so this is my website FX at one glance all right so you will go there and then you would go to lifetime membership 
and once you click on lifetime membership just click there to become a member all right so that's what you're looking at guys um pretty much uh nothing else to really t discuss with you but again if you want to become a member i'm offering that lifetime membership for one year i mean till the end of this year and after that you will never be able to get another lifetime membership so take advantage of it while it's still there got a lot of members um going to be opening up a new chat room because i'm going to show you that real quick our current chat room is not at this location but as a member you'll be able to click here and get into our our chat room and we're doing some upgrading and getting a better chat room and trying to get things a little tighter and then also we have our forum and then all of our courses right here and then videos market analysis videos trade setup videos and then educational videos inside the forum are a lot of videos and a lot of um, trader discussions and then our member chat room okay so once again I'm offering that for um, till the end of this year and after that that's gonna be it lifetime member alright guys I think I've said enough and done enough <laughs> so I'll talk to you next time and take care of have a great trading week and like I said like I said trees that are slow to grow bear the best fruit so until next time have a great one God bless so long